When you think of a croc, you see its big bulky features. Hold like Swiss cheese, and to many, just a really ugly looking shoe. But to me, a croc has been one of the greatest things to ever enter my life. A shoe that has led me to make lifelong memories and connections. A shoe that has taken me around the world. And best of all, a shoe that has given me a new perspective of the world that I would have never thought of exploring. I grew up into a very active, outdoorsy family. Ever since I was a newborn, I was on the back of my mother and father as we went on hiking trips. As a kid, I never wanted to stay inside and play video games. All of the fun to me was outside. Little did I know that by spending all of this time outside, I was getting so many life skills. In a Harvard study, researcher Claire McCarthy explained that by allowing a child to play outside will not only improve a child's physical health, but will build on skills like problem solving and planning. By playing outside, all of my trips to the mulch area were eating the grass behind my house that smelled like onions, which ultimately led to an unpleasant stomach ache. It was important for me to take these risks at a developing age. It taught me lessons of what and what not to do, and also of how to fix something that didn't go as planned. When I was in fifth grade, I joined Boy Scouts and have been in it ever since. The program has been one of the most impactful opportunities I have ever had, and has taught me so many life lessons. For example, like learning to be selfless. We have a saying in Scouts that says, one hand for yourself and one hand for your crew. Basically, it's saying, give as much as you take, and in many cases, even give more. Looking back at it, it was amazing that I learned these life lessons at such a young age. As I became more involved in scouting, I was now allowed to go on backpacking trips. In 2015, I embarked on my first backpacking trip, where we hiked 50 plus miles in Pennsylvania. It was one of the most grueling times of my life. But want to know what made it worse? I was crockless. At the time, I didn't consider the idea of how amazing a croc could be in a backpacking situation. However, everyone else had crocs. By having crocs, it gave them the opportunity to walk and play in the streams and just enjoy what nature had to offer because the shoes would dry quickly and protect their feet from the rocks. Meanwhile, I had to stand on the side and watch because I only brought flip-flops. Besides the grueling hike, this was the first time I started to create a connection with my now lifelong friends. The purpose of the hike was to throw us right into the deep end and see how we would perform. It gave me the opportunity to build a closer connection with the outdoors. If I were never forced to break out of my comfort zone, I probably would have never found myself on this trip to begin with. After the trip, we went to take on Philmont. In scouting, it is considered the pinnacle. An over 100,000 acre property in New Mexico, where around 23,000 participants go to take on a two week trek every year. At Philmont, we embarked on a 124 mile backpacking trip where we climbed four of the tallest peaks on the ranch and at one point lugged two burrows along for a few days. But now you're wondering, okay Matt, you like the outdoors, you go hiking, what does any of this have to do with a croc? On the trip I went on at Philmont, I finally got myself crocs. I clipped them right on the outside of my pack and they followed me along for the 12 day hike. By now, everyone in the crew had crocs. At the end of a long day of hiking, we would peel off our tight, hot boots and throw in our Crocs. I can talk all day about how Crocs are the most durable, most comfortable camp shoe. And no, I am not sponsored by Crocs. I wish. What is so amazing about a Croc is at the end of the day when we would just sit around the campsite, this is when we would all connect the most. The Crocs symbolize the end of the day when we would just sit around and reflect on all of our experiences throughout the day and all of the beauty that surrounded us while just enjoying each other's company. We'd hear the rustling of bears and mountain lions in the trees as we would laugh the day away with the entire Milky Way galaxy overhead. After the trip, it made me realize how important it was to preserve this experience for others. In a study by psychologist David Kolb, he found the best way to learn is by actually experiencing the subject. Yes, we can look at pictures of mountains on the computer or watch the news and hear about how our world is being destroyed. But unless we actually gain that personal knowledge, like going on our first hiking trip, or finding ourselves outside more, we won't have that deep connection to truly care about the world around us. We see in the news every day the topic of global warming. Despite the scientific evidence, people continue to challenge how real it is becoming and continue to politicize it. Protesters take to the streets about it. As we speak, Antarctica is melting. Coral reefs are being destroyed. The oceans are rising. Animals are going extinct and on and on. The topics we hear about in the news every day are easy to ignore because we don't personally experience it. These subjects aren't tangible to us because they're not in our backyard yet. It doesn't remind us every second of how destructive we have become. Instead, we continue to argue. 
But what if we rethink our approach to the climate crisis? What if we tried to teach someone to appreciate? We argue about global warming because of how dire and urgent the cause is. But since we're all human, we don't all have the same opinion. Some don't see the urgency in the matter. Some say, I'm going to be dead by the time the effects start. We are in this position today because of these selfish actions. But what if this is because people don't really even know what we're talking about saving? If we were to give back to the earth more than we were to take away from it every day, we would find ourselves in a better position. Studies have found that the average American will spend about 7% of their day outdoors. That's a little over one and a half hours. And that's probably the time we take to walk from school or work to the car, or to the train station, or from the parking lot to Costco. No wonder many people in this world don't see a reason to save the earth. We realize the importance of the outdoors when we are cut off from it. When we lose that connection with the outdoors, we can find ourselves being faced with depression and stress. In the book Lost Connections, Johan Hari explained that people who moved closer to the city saw a big increase in depression, while those who moved away from them saw a decrease. Recently, with all of us in quarantine, many of us have found ourselves longing for a chance to get outside. We realize this after only a number of weeks, but how will we feel if we were to lose that opportunity forever? By teaching someone to find their own meaning for the outdoors, they can start to realize how their own personal efforts can save the world. In 2018, I experienced the ultimate connection with nature and went on the trip of a lifetime. After two years of fundraising and planning, myself, eight of my best friends, and two of my mentors flew to Switzerland to hike through the Swiss Alps. We mapped out about a 100-mile trek on the out route. For 10 days, we traveled from Zermatt to Verbier, surrounded the entire time by some of the most amazing views on Earth. We hiked on slippery snow on cliff edges and held on the chains to prevent us falling from hundreds of feet. We climbed up a ladder hanging on the face of a sheer wall with nothing below us, and the whole time carried everything we needed on our backs, including our Crocs. Now our Crocs had changed from dull navy colors to hot pink and yellow and gained some gibbet bling. At the end of our long days of hiking, there we were again, popping on our trusty Crocs. After five years of hiking, I have gone on every single backpacking trip, except my first one, with my Crocs. And time and time again, when I have those Crocs on, that is when I make some of my greatest memories. This is when we sit down and appreciate each other. This is when we appreciate the world. If you take one thing away from this talk, it shouldn't be that you need to go buy Crocs to make amazing memories should make you realize that there's a whole world out there that is yet to be explored. Take an hour, take a weekend, take a week to go and appreciate the beauty that is all throughout this world. This world is something that everyone for generations to come should have the ability to appreciate. In order to have a true impact on this world, we need to teach each other how to appreciate the world that we are beginning to lose. Thank you.